Well, well, here we are. The first half of the season is in the books, and what a wild one it was. I'm here with Joey. Yeah, wild, wild, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I, I suppose we should start off with the draft. I mean, I don't pay a lot of attention to the draft, but uh, kind of a big deal right now. Henry Davis goes first out of Louisville. First catcher, seventh, only the seventh catcher ever to be selected first in the draft. 370, 15 home runs in 55 0 games. Jack Leiter goes to Texas, number two. Jackson Job to the Tigers, a right handed pitcher. Shortstop Marcelo Meyer. Goes to Boston. Fifth pick was Colton Cowser. To the Orioles, an outfielder. Jordan Lawler, shortstop. D-backs, God. The ba- Imagine the pressure on that fucking kid. Yes, please, please, we're drowning here. Frank Mazzucato, a left-handed pitcher to the Royals. Benny Montgomery, outfielder, Colorado. Sam Bachman, right-hander to the Angels, and Kumar Rocker, my favorite name of the day, Kumar Rocker, another right-handed pitcher, he goes to the Mets. Man, that fucking Futures game was a massacre, was it not? Oh, Jesus Christ, what was that about? Six or seven home runs, it was totally lopsided most of the way. Of course, they're playing up in Colorado, so yeah, don't get used to this, kids. Don't get you. Don't get, exactly, don't get used to this. Um, little tidbits from the weekend, uh, the little back and forth between the Yanks and the, the Strohs and the exposing of the front top of the jersey. So after Altuve, of course, yesterday. Walk off fucking three run homer. Yes, and then as he gets to, because who was it? It was, uh. Judge, Judge the other night. Yeah, Judge the other night, but there was another one yesterday. Someone was uh, pulling at the top of their jersey. It was Maldonado. Where the hell did you come from? I don't know. I just decided to show up here. All right, Arnold all of a sudden has stepped into the booth here. Yes, Maldonado was pulling at the top of his jersey after an opposite field homer, and then Altuve gets absolutely shredded like, look, I'm all naked under here. Better late than never, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, so very kind of him in a game that doesn't mean shit. Oh, what else? Uh, Oh, the D-backs right fielder, as if they don't have enough problems. What horrible experiences there. With He dropped. I thought Turner. I thought Turner was going to hit another goddamn grand slam, and uh, it dies at the track. I'm like, okay, great, and the kid dropped it. And then there was a relay play where he like was playing slap ball back in the day at the handball courts. He just whacked the thing into like right center field. But oh, a little Fletch. Little David Eckstein 2.0 for the Angels. David Fletcher. Seven hits this weekend. Two home runs. Not only two home runs. The first two home runs of the year for him. That was hilarious. Exactly. I was like, he had not gone deep. I haven't gone deep in a while. <laughs> <laughs> My God, Jack, you're disgusting. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me just give Mildred a call. Hey, do not, do not go there. Do not go there. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, Fletcher, two home runs. And a 24-game hitting streak. Only four shy of tying Garrett Anderson from like 23, 24 years ago. Uh, if he can reach 29. But ooh, what a low blow on another part of the Angels. Personnel moves. Yeah, Darren Sutton, what a fucking shock. I, 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 I did not see that fucking coming. I know, I mean, in a, in a season where they keep changing the rules in the middle of the year with the sticky stuff and all that, I guess Sutton just fell victim to that as well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 
no no uh no excuse given i don't think they found anything on his computer or anything so i have no idea what that's all about it just says like something weird in his twitter was like this was a short-term experiment that i wasn't aware of or sure of or something like that right right he made it out to be like you know they have that very odd situation anyway they've got vasgersian doing you know a couple of games a week why they hire a guy who's barely available at all? I, I never understood that. And then they get, I really enjoyed the Sutton story. You know, it was... Exactly. This guy was a, a radio guy for them like 20 years ago, and they bring him back. Right. And uh, you figure, oh, cool. A guy whose dad pitched for the team. He grew up an Angels fan. Now he's back 20 years later to be a to be a part. Time lover. Um... And now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he uh, he's out of a job and uh, not too well liked on Twitter. But I will give it to the fans. They were very gracious toward him. Sorry to see you go. What? Can't believe it. This is fuckery at its finest. All that kind of stuff. Anyway, they have not named an announcement, although. uh, Yeah, Rich Waltz, please. No, 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 no. He's even more fucking annoying. He's like the top contender, apparently. His name has been bandied. Yes, right, right. That was absolutely brutal. Exactly, exactly. I couldn't stand him with the Marlins. No, please don't. But but this this is the thing, you guys. A very interesting possibility is that Gary Thorne is available and he lives in Southern California. So that would be a very good fit. Still has the pipes. Very traveled and very competent broadcaster. I was unaware of this, Arnie, really. Yes, the Orioles fired his ass, you know, in the off season, and he is now doing the... Well, he's not doing anything, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he, but he lives, uh, I don't know where, but somewhere in the Southland, in the OC or somewhere... And he could be a very easy uh, candidate to be able to come along. It, it, I mean, it was... If, if this does happen, it would totally remind me of the Joe Madden situation in Chicago because he became available all of a sudden from the Rays and they booted uh, Renteria out of there because all of a sudden the Madden becomes available. So I would not be surprised if they made some sort of backroom deal with, um, with Gary Thorne. Yes, yes. Wow, Gary Thorne. That'd be very good. Goodbye, home run. Yes, he's very entertaining broadcast. I would not, I would not kick him out of the bed for eating Chipotle. Okay. Um. So anyway, that's the situation over there. Um. The Padres kind of limped into the break with a couple. Not only did they lose a couple of games to Colorado, they only scored like a run, I believe. They got shut out on Saturday, and they got a run uh, yesterday. And it was another member of the Crone Zone who went deep yesterday. That's right, CJ Crone. There's more than one Crone, Orstillo. There's CJ. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Crone hit a home run. And then uh, Chris Owings hits a home run in the ninth inning, for Christ's sake. His first of the year. And that breaks a 1-1 tie and they go on to win the ball game. Okay, 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 okay. But my favorite one was uh, Nagowski for the Pirates. He beat uh, uh, Sugar Diaz. I mean, the game was tied, but he, but he broke the tie with a base hit in the ninth inning. Nagowski, guess what they call him, Jack? Oh, no, am I ready for this? The big Nagowski, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Do they really? Oh, hell yeah, oh, fuck yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, how about that? I can't wait to see him. Um, <clears throat> I believe it was only uh, only a, a little while ago that uh, Alonzo won the uh, home run derby again. Right. I, I just, I can't get into that thing. It's too fucking long anymore. I mean, remember back in the day, it was like an hour long. Now, what the fuck? It's like... And it's so goddamn hyped anymore. They're filming him doing batting practice yesterday. Then I get an alert on my phone today. Watch them take batting practice for what's essentially a batting practice derby. Are you kidding me? And then the thing is three hours long. 
Oh my God, you're exactly right. You guys are crazy. I cannot stand it. It's, oh, it's, it's overdone. It's overblown. I can't, I can't pay any attention to it. And, um, anyway, Alonzo won. Otani hit one to Fort Collins, apparently, but big deal. By the way, we will, uh, uh, Joe and I will be broadcasting a couple of innings of the All-Star Game tomorrow. You, t- you, don't, you don't turn in live for that because it's going to be live on tape. We're going to record it and then load it a little bit while after that. Um, yeah, they were showing Olsen taking batting practice uh, yesterday in Texas. Like, come on, you, you just hi- Is this guy going to be in it? Is this guy going to be excluded? Who's going to? I mean, I don't care. The fucking Yanks are on a fucking ventilator right now. Who cares about the fucking home run derby? Well, you hey, did Joe, you thought the Yankee bullpen was bad. How about the Detroit? I don't give a flying fuck. Wait, wait, wait. No, you got to hear this. It's crazy. So Detroit, in the last two games, over the course of nine innings, 17 hits, 20 runs, and they've walked 13. The bullpen is one ugly motherfucker. Okay, well, that, yeah, that's something different. Holy shit, really. What'd you say, 20 runs? 20 runs. 20 runs, holy shit. Well, okay. I don't want to commit suicide too much anymore, but all right. <laughs> um, oh, and uh, Pablo Lopez had the nine straight strikeouts to start a game against Atlanta. Um, the last person to do it was Herman Marquez three years ago prior to that. It's so weird. 2018, Herman Marquez. DeGrom in 2014, and no one had done it prior, since Jim Two Silhouettes on Deshaies in September of 86 for Houston. That's going back. That is going back, Joey. That's way the fuck back. I could not believe it. All right, let's take a look at our first half results here. Boston at 55 and 36 lead the East by a game and a half over the Rays. Having won five out of their last ten to uh, end the first half. 28-19 at home and a 27-17 and road team. Tampa is a game and a half back, 53-37. and They won six out of ten. 11 over at home, five over on the road. The Blue Jays, 45-42. and Now see, this is odd. You say 19-20 and at home, but of course that's between Dunedin and Buffalo. Uh, 26 and 22 away, which is always, they're always away. And they lose 6 out of 10. I, uh, I, I, I can't read this next team. I, oh gosh, it's so smudgy, even though it's on an electronic device. I, you know, I'm gonna have to gloss over it. Wh- whoever they are, 46 and 43. Oh, I see what you did there. Okay, I was like, what are you talking about? Right, right, 46 and 43, 8 out. One over at home, two over on the road, five out of ten. I mean, they had a decent showing in Houston to end the first half. Um, You know, whoever this team is. Baltimore, I mean, what can you say? 28 and 61, 13 home wins versus 30 losses, 31 more on the road. They lost seven out of ten to end the half, if you care. Chicago. 54-35 54-35 and 35 to lead the Central. Eight games over Cleveland. 31-14 and 14 at home. Two over on the road. They've won seven out of ten. The Indians, three over. Eight out. They lost seven out of ten. Detroit, 11 under. 15 out. About 500 at home. 10 under on the road. Then the Twins, 11 under. 15 out. The Royals are... 18 back. Another just abysmal road team. 15 and 31. Houston in the West. 55 and 36. 10 over at home. 7 out of 10 to finish. 12 over for the A's. 3.5 back. So they're still. I mean, Olsen's practically carrying that team. There's still new kids on the block and it hanging tough. But they lose 6 out of 10. Seattle took two out of three from the Angels over the weekend. They're five up. And now nine games over at home. Six out of ten in the win column. 
LAA, nine back, a game over 500. They finally fought to that in recent weeks. Six over at home, five under on the road, seven out of ten. And the Rangers are 19 and a half out. Not horrible at home. They're three under, but they're another one of these road teams with 30 road losses. They lose six out of ten. In the NL East, the Mets, seven over. They win six out of ten to end the half. 28 home victories versus 26 road losses. Phillies at 544 all. Eight under on the road. But not a bad home team. Eight over. Seven out of ten. The Braves. A game under. Now the Acuna situation. They at least won six out of ten. Eight out of ten in the L column for the Nats. They didn't have much fun over the weekend. In San Francisco where they got swept. Continue to struggle on the road. Seven under. And the Marlins. Eleven under. Nine out. A game over. At home, that's something. The Central has the Brews. 14 over, a four-game lead. Though they kind of were pissing on their own hands at the very end there. As they dropped three out of four to the Reds. Who are four out, have won eight out of ten. Six games above 500. Could be potential buyers in the coming weeks. The Cubs, you know, after the no-hitter. Well, then they were no-hitters. And no pitchers. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Eight out of ten. They've lost 29 road games. Also eight out. Same record are the Cardinals. Everyone's speculating. Oh, they still have a little bit left. They're buyers. No, they're not. Get your head out of your cuckoo. They have no sense of consistency. Five over at home, but seven under on the road. And then the Pirates, 18 games out. Another 31 loss team on the road. The Giants, 25 games over 500, as mentioned, a nice weekend against the Nats. To say Al Malagueña as they head in, into the half with 57 wins and a two game lead on the LAD, having won 7 out of 10. Very good home team, 30 victories, and a 27 winner on the road. Dodgers, 56 35, won 6 out of 10. They got the Diamondbacks to end the first half, so they had that little dip in there where they couldn't get anything done and then looked at the name on their jersey and said, this is bullshit, and they started tearing new schwinkters all over the place. San Diego, still getting the hype despite the fact that they're in third place, 53-40, and 40, brilliant home team, 33 victories. Let me scroll up here. Does that lead baseball? It appears that it would, yes. But a game under on the road. Six out of ten. Again, you drop two games to Colorado to end your first half. You want to go find an unshaved vagina to bury your head into. Forty and fifty-one for those Rockies. Eighteen games back. And again, they're just the anomaly of the year on their home record. 14 games over, yet they are still, oh my God. Wow, 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 let me see. Holy shit, single digits. Single digits on the road. Are you kidding me? I have to see this for myself. Oh, oh Jesus Christ, I don't believe it. <laughs> Nine road victories. Nine. They are not even in double digits. But they win six out of ten to win the first half. And the D-backs, well, bye. So... There is your first half summation. Um, any closing thoughts, gentlemen? Uh, yeah. Hang Brian Cashman. Hang Brian Cashman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And for you, sir? I'm very horny. Yes, yes. I can't help you out there, but I wish you the best of luck in the world. All right, that does it for this Jack cast. Again, a reminder... Probably really, really late. So if you're driving around somewhere and you want to hear the first two innings by a couple of real pros, first couple of innings of the All-Star game, Joey and I will do some play-by-play -play for that just to see how it pans out. And we'll have that loaded up late night. And uh, Otani Scherzer and Showtime leading it off. That's going to be great. So good night and get fucked. 